Hey guys, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Chase. Today I wanted to talk to you about my MP5K. It's a new gun that I've been working on. It's a little build. And I just kind of wanted to overview the gun itself and go over some of the strong points about it compared to my previous platform that I was using as an SMG, which is my M4 CQBR. So this gun, as you can see, is a lot bigger, right? Like significantly bigger. The length of pull is about the same. In fact, this has a little bit more length of pull, which I kind of prefer. But the, this was run as an SMG with a mag adapter, which isn't in here. But I was running into some issues with milsim rules requiring that an SMG be a true SMG and not just be an M4 with a mag adapter. Or if it was an M4 with a mag adapter, that it was in fact permanent on an M4 with a DSG that makes that means that you either have to glue the adapter in or find another way to spoof it and both of those reasons leave an adapter in the gun and that makes it harder to take apart so I didn't want to do that but this there's no way getting around that this is in fact an SMG um, I've done a few 3d print modifications to it um, before I get into these the first thing I did was I got a scope mount which you have to get what's called a claw mount uh, an HK claw mount and then I got this little scope off of Airsoft Extreme. It's a little uh, ASG um, pistol scope. It's for like the CZ P07 or something like that. But um, it's just a little pistol scope, but I think it looks really, really good on here. I think it keeps the gun's profile nice and low uh, and it doesn't really add a lot of ex extra width to it. Um, but the thing is, is that since it's so low profile, my front sight was getting in the way. So I pre 3D printed this custom piece that is a, uh, a front sight delete that has the uh, 14 by one left hand draw or left hand um, screw here, left hand threading. And then I put my custom flash hider on here that uh, I think it looks pretty good. It is a really nice little platform. The plastics themselves are pretty, pretty nice. I have no complaints about the quality of the plastic. The texturing is nice. It's a little bit shiny but for the cost of the gun, I'm really not complaining. Likewise with the metal, it's a little bit heavier than I think it should be. Um, but again, it's an $85 airsoft gun. Uh, and for that, you're getting a full metal gun with a full metal gearbox. The one thing I will say is that the internals leave a little bit to be desired. I did break the, tr the trigger trolley as soon as I took it out. It was just held on by a little piece of metal. And once that broke, it, there was no way I could get it back. I tried soldering it, but it wouldn't work. So I had to get, I just got a gate aster for this, which I also wouldn't really recommend. Um, the thing about the gate aster is that it's meant for a G36. And on a G36, you have safe, semi, full, which is the opposite of what's on the MP5. And so the problem with that is, is that you need to go into the GCS app and reconfigure your safe to be full auto, your semi can stay semi, and then your um, your safe then becomes, or your full auto then becomes safe. So it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to make sure that you configure that correctly, which also means that the, conf the calibration settings are a little bit different. So when it says, oh, you need to go into semi, pull the trigger, go into safe, pull the trigger, go into semi, pull the trigger, go into full auto, pull the trigger, whatever it is, you gotta remember that it's the opposite of what they say, which makes pulling the trigger on safe, which is full auto, pretty difficult. Um, at any rate, I did get that resolved for the most part, and everything else is stock with the exception of the sector gear, which broke on me. I put an A and K sector gear in there from, from an ACR that I took apart. Uh, and then I've got the stock motor, but the spring was shooting a little hot, so I put uh, a lighter weight spring in it, and. It's shooting right around one joule right now, which is exactly what my field limit is. Um, so this is, I think, a really cool platform. I think it's a little underrated how um, MP5 mags are so ubiquitous, right? So everyone is hopping on the V2 uh, PCC pistol caliber carbine bandwagon, which is your ARP9s, your... Uh, PX9s from Classic Army, uh, whatever the case may be, but I quite frankly think that being able to 
have mags that everyone probably already uses is a really cool thing. And I think the MP5 is just a really classic silhouette. Um, and this gun performs pretty well. And one thing that I will not, I will not um, shake is the size, right? It's so, it's such a compact little platform that it, it almost is too short for my hands. Like when I'm running the M M4, it's like I'm out here and I have enough room to keep my arm down. Even if I C-clamp up here, I have enough room so I'm not chicken winging. But with the MP5K, and I guess this is why it came with a vertical grip, so you can go like that, but honestly, it's almost hard to keep your hand down and out of the way while you're uh, aiming this thing. But that's just me because that's a big boy problem. Um, one thing I will say is that this does have a very strict battery compartment. Um, it comes with a battery that fits, but it's like a crappy nickel cadmium battery and I was not about to use that with a Tamiya. So uh, the first thing I did when I put, well, the first thing I did was I switched it to Dean's and then the second thing I did was I put an Aster in it which came with Dean's. Um, but I was using an AK battery, an AK stick type battery that fits down into an AK will fit perfectly in here and you will be able to fit an 11.1, which is huge. You're not gonna get super high um, amp hours out of it, but you're gonna be able to fit one in here. Um, but yeah, so I guess in summation, my thoughts are this is a really cool platform for really cheap. Um, don't knock the versatility of the magazines and don't knock having such a compact platform that every mil sim is gonna take regardless of what d you're running on it. So um, let's get into the teardown procedure for this gun or rather the reassembly procedure. So let's get into it to reassembling this gun here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my selector detent thing back into my selector plate here. So the selector plate is what determines where or what fire mode the gun's in and it also has the physical safety on it. Um, and then that mo is moved by a little selector gear and that's what I just put in there. The selector gear is going to uh, be turned by the, select, the selector switch on the gun itself, and I'm just making sure that the travel of those two things are the same. So when you put the gear in, you want to make sure that it's going to uh, go from like full end, end point to end point on the selector switch itself, and vice versa. Now I'm just putting the wires in the right place. The top receiver is in three pieces, um, a top piece that holds two side pieces together. So the two side pieces are held together with three screws. The top piece is held together with one of those three screws. So right now I only have one screw out and my selector detent just fell out. So I'm going to catch that part, the little spring and the little plate, make sure that they go back together. Just slide the gun in right before those parts go in. Make sure that I put those two pieces to back together. And then I'm going to put it back in the gun. And then this is probably about the time that you'd want to put these parts in just to make sure that they're not going flying everywhere. But these pieces are on the, um, the left face of the gun. So you want to have that facing up. From there, you can just slide the receiver in until it meets with the barrel. Make sure that the wires are in the right place. And now all those selector bits should be being held in by the top receiver itself, by the upper receiver. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the lower receiver and feed both the wires through the same hole. So unlike in a V2 where you have separate holes that the wires go into for the positive and negative, this only has one hole. So that's why my red wire is so much longer than my black wire is because it needs to go under and around the motor in there. Black wire is in. This red wire is going to give me a heap of trouble here. I'm going to try to suffer with it for a few minutes. And then I'm going to pull back out and then try it again with a different angle and it goes right in. So you're going to see me fishing, fishing, fishing for it. It's not going to work. Try it again, take it out, try a new angle, and it slips right in. Easy day. 
All right, from here, it's the easy part. You just slide the lower receiver right into the upper receiver. Make sure that you're pulling down on the wires through the uh, motor cage to make sure that you're giving them enough uh, tension in there to, that you're going to have enough wire. And then you slide right in, make sure the pin holes line up, make sure your wires are coming through with enough length, and you're good to go on that. So that's your upper and lower receiver together. So now we're going to put this top part of the receiver on. This is, this is the piece I was telling you about that holds the upper receiver together. So it just snaps right on top of these. Holds it right in like that. And then there's one screw right here that you're going to put in. And that's going to hold the entire upper and lower receiver together. There's a second screw here. You don't need to touch it. We're going to screw this one in lock everything in place. There's a second one behind the magazine release that you don't need to worry about either. You can leave both of those fully tightened down and you don't need to worry about taking the barrel or hop up out. And then if you want to take the barrel or hop up out, you just take out those two additional screws. The gun effectively splits in half and then you're left with just a hop up and a barrel and you can take those out and modify them to your will. I'm going to put the screws in here for the motor. Um, this first one gives me a bit of trouble because it's at a really weird angle in there. So like I said, this is actually a V3 gearbox that has a little adapter on it that lets it fit essentially a V2 style motor. Um, and that's what I'm screwing this into. Normally on a V3 gearbox, you have a motor cage that holds the motor. The second screw should go in a little bit easier. Make sure the wires are nice and out of the way. Pull them off to the side, pop it in. and screw it right in. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to put the fire selector switch in. So I'm putting all my bits back as I use them. I take them out and then I put them on there as I use them and then I put them away as I'm done. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the fire selector off. The left side is by itself and the right side has the bar attached to it. What you're going to do is you're just going to line that up and make sure that it goes through the hole in the selector gear. Make sure that it lines up, make sure that it moves, and then I put this switch on the other side. And then I like getting at it from the bottom, so it should be about halfway between full and semi-auto. Crank that back down, make sure it's nice and tight, make sure we've got full travel of the selector switch. And now we're going to put in the motor. So I'm going to try to put in the motor here, and it's not going to give me full the full travel. It's not going to seat all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here. It's going to I'm going to struggle with it for a minute. I'm going to try to get it to work, and it's not going to work. It's not going to go into place. It's not going to seat properly. So put it on my lap. I'm going to struggle with it some more. Then I decide, you know what? Let me just take it right back out. Take it out, make sure my wires are in the right place, feed them where they need to be. Put the motor back in and lo and behold it goes in right on the first try. All right, so now I can put on my little wires. Positive goes on first because it's the long one pain in the ass. Then I put on the short little negative one. Once that's on, I'm going to grab my uh, bottom plate for the motor cage. And then there's this little tiny metal disc, and that goes right in the center. And what that does is it gives a greater surface area to the screw, the grub screw, that they use for the motor height adjustment. So I'm going to tip the gun over, put it on there, make sure that it doesn't fall out of place, hold my thumb on it, and then screw this screw down first just to make sure it's in place and nothing's going to move. From there, once it's in, and I'm sure it's in, I grab my screwdriver, screw everything down, make sure it's nice and tight. And I'm still keeping that finger on there to make sure that it's not moving. I'm still keeping one hand on it at all times. All right, from here, put that last screw in. Beautiful, the gun is effectively set up. The last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put my front grip on, which just goes on like that. And then you take one of the pins, pop the pin through there. And then the final, final piece is just your front sight. 
Um, mine doesn't really have a sight on it per se. Actually, I'm wrong. What you're going to do is you're going to grab this pin that goes right below the magwell, and it's got sort of a plus design on it that sits in holes on there. So I'm going to take this, put that last pin in the gun. It's unique from the other pins. There's no other pin like it on this gun. So I'm just going to grab a flathead, screw that last pin in, Beautiful. And then for sure, finally, the last piece is going to be the front sight or the front sight delete with the, uh, the, mat, the flash hider on it. So you just push that down, make sure it's seated in there nice and tight. And then there's a little grub screw that goes right through that top piece of the receiver that holds it in place. And then once that's in, you have yourself a completely assembled MP5K. Got my battery. This is the AK battery I was talking about. Connect it, give it a couple shots. Make sure it works. Great. All right, see you guys next time. Thanks, bye.